Howdy folks and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show. You are here with Ben and Lauren on this happy Monday. <laughs> uh, before we get into today's episode, don't forget to subscribe wherever you're listening to your podcast, be that YouTube, um, through your podcast app on your phone, all that sort of jazz. And we also have the Snows Camping Show group on Facebook, um, which is a place where you can get involved in the discussion, give us your ideas, chat to your fellow campers about all sorts of different stuff. Yep. Um, in today's episode, we are covering one of the questions from our recent Q&A uh, episodes, I think maybe the part one uh, episode, I reckon off the top of my head, where somebody asked, um, about Kevin and his off-roading sort of spare parts list and things to sort of cover you in an emergency. So, um, the Facebook group and also sort of YouTube comments and things like that is a really great place for you to interact with us and give us yeah. ideas for content. Invite, invite your friends Just too. like this. It's about the conversation. Yeah. Bigger and better. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, as you've already guessed, we have Kevin with us today. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Kev. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Ben. How are you going? Good. Good. Welcome to the show on this cold Monday. We haven't um, spoken to you since you're in a data trip. Really? No, that's right. Yeah. Have you been? Have you done anything since then? Any like no, base, night or two basically, nights? Basically clean, <laughs> and take mud off the van <laughs> and clean the just car and yeah, unpack and clean some more. Yeah, that's basically what I've been doing. Is your driveway just full of old dusty mud that you've it's been washed out, dried? But you know how after you clean your car after a big trip, you then end you have up to with clean just your red dust and stuff in your driveway and everywhere. Is that how yeah, your house looks at the moment? Bad, I, I cleaned a lot of it uh, when we were in Alice Springs, but the caravan was a bit of a mess. And, uh, yeah, every t- even now I drive down the drive and park it and I drive the car away again and there's this little clump of mud that's just decided to drop off from somewhere <laughs> where I haven't got it yet. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's almost all gone. It's almost like you need one of those giant vibration plates to just put your caravan on and then it wobbles and all the bits fall off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to do it before you get it wet though, don't you? But then that doesn't yeah, help because it money. muddy. But, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know that, Kevin, you've given us a quick rundown in a message that you sent me about um, your spare parts lists and stuff, more so specifically when people are off-roading or they're going super rural where they won't necessarily have access to a hardware store or a service station and, and things like that or a mechanic even. Um, and so we thought we'd get stuck into it in a bit more detail today. So these are spare parts for the caravan. Extras yeah. you need. So you're going to have stuff for your vehicle, supposedly, already in your vehicle. These are extras that you need because you're towing a caravan. Yeah. So, Kev, you've sent us through your spare parts list. Yes. Which Ben and I are looking at. Now, is this um, your sort of default list for every trip? It, it is. It's the basic list that I've made up. Um, there's quite a lot on it. Um, a lot of these things you probably wouldn't need if you're only going to go on a short trip. But uh, as the question was for uh, you know, remote areas or extended mm-hmm. touring, I mm-hmm. tried to put in everything I can think of. And I think the thing you've got to think about of what can possibly go wrong, um, you know, uh, am I going to be able to fix it or am I not going to be able to fix it? Can I do a, a short fix just to get yourself going again? So those are the things that I I base my my list on, um, what I can do and some things obviously I can't do. If the wheel breaks off altogether, well, there's not much I can do about that. But mm. if things come loose, um, or, or hoses come loose or whatever or start to leak or even if you happen to be unlucky enough to do in a set of bearings. Those sort of things are the things that I think about that I can actually fix on the road if I have to. Um, other things I just have to basically face the fact that I've got to leave the van and go on and get help from somewhere else. And where do you store all this stuff just before we go into the list? Is, do you kind of store it all together in one spot or is this just spread out across your, your car and your caravan and, and all sorts of different locations? Uh, it's mostly all in one place. Um, I do have a couple of things, but most of the, the parts lists that I have uh, go in a box. I've made myself a toolbox that carries uh, all of these little bits and pieces. I have a separate toolbox, of course, and then there's uh, things that I would call recovery gear. That's in a separate bag as well, but really that's about all. I don't have them spread out anywhere else. There's somewhere where I can easily access them if I need to um, on the spur of the moment. Cool. Should we jump into so, the list? So, yeah, I reckon um, what we'll do is we'll just run through the, the list and just pick Kev's brains a bit more about each one. 
Yep. It's yeah. a long list. We'll see. We'll try not to yeah. drag on too long, but you started off with hose clamps. Um, so when I think vehicle, I think like radiator hose clamps, but for a caravan, what sort of hose clamps are you covering off on there? Well, hose clamps are really for any of your plumbing. Uh, a lot of the hoses that feed into pumps that feed your water supply from your tanks, they're all uh, hose clamps of different sizes. So you want to basically get underneath them and have a look and just see what sizes you need. Um, it's the sort of situation there if you, you split a hose or crack a hose, you might want to put a joiner in it. Uh, that's another thing on my list of various hose joiners. And, of course, you need to put clamps on for that. Uh, there is a chance that, of course, the clamps may break and come off. So you've got to replace them, otherwise you're going to lose a lot of your water. So hose clamps, uh, tie wire, cable ties, all those things can be used to tie your hoses back together and in some cases tie them up. If they've come loose and they're dragging or hanging down, you can tie them up as well with uh, cable ties and, and tie wire. So it's always – it's all sort of the, the one thing, really, that covers a, a variety of uses. So, so the hose – sorry. No, I was going to say, do you um, – I notice on your list you don't have hose. Would you ever – um, take spare lengths of hose itself? Uh, probably not spare. If I happen to um, damage a hose, mm-hmm. uh, I carry water hose as normal to fill the water tanks or to, to connect to a main pressure. I would just use a piece of that. I'd cut it off okay. and use that. Uh, I wouldn't actually carry spare hoses. I'd use what I've got for other reasons, yeah. Yep, okay. So, and with the, uh, the filler hose, that's another matter, though, because the filler hose is generally the same as your waste hose. Now, if the water filler hose happened to get damaged, I'm not going to use my waste hose because that's going to put rubbish into Mm. your tank. Yeah, of course. So that's something that you, if you wanted to, you could take a spare piece of hose for that. But I rely more on joiners. It's it's unlikely they're going to tear the whole hose off. If that happens, well, you just have to adapt something else Mm -hmm. or carry spare water to make do. But uh, usually if the hose is damaged, it's a matter, as I said before, to cutting the the damaged section out and perhaps using a joiner to join it back up again so you can keep going. So I'm assuming those like little, um, I don't know what the technical name for them is, but they're like metal and they've got a little Phillips mm. head screw on it. And it's like a loop. Like a, a loop. Yeah. And as you screw the screw, the loop tightens and it feeds through. Right. Yeah. I'm assuming they would be the most versatile because they they're, uh, would suit a wide variety of sizes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get them easily from hardware stores or motor accessory places. And mm-hmm. you can select several different sizes. You usually get something that will fit. It'll do the job for you. You don't have to have a big range, but just a couple of spares of about two or three different sizes. They take up very little room and they're a handy thing to have. Yeah. So you've got, I feel like the next four kind of almost go hand in hand for everything. Tie wire, insulation tape, duct tape and cable ties. Uh, duct tape and cable ties seem like a you just got to have them because you can fix most things even temporarily with duct tape and cable ties. But um, is, is there a reason why you take insulation tape and duct tape? Well, duct tape is is really good. You could, if you are in a situation where you broke a window uh, or cracked a glass on your caravan, you can usually put duct tape over the top of the glass to try and seal it up. In a really bad case, if you have a piece of tarp, I usually take a bit of blue tarp I use as a ground sheet. You can cut a piece out of that and tape the whole window out. Now, insulation tape's not going to hold that all that well, but duct taping will stick to pretty much anything. Some people call it gaffer tape, too, or even mm. sometimes they call it 100-mile-an-hour tape because it will withstand, withstand all sorts of stresses. And you can do a lot of uh, decent stuff with the duct tape, even if it comes to you know, taping um, your hoses back together and get a leaky hose. And this is talking about a car, really. If you get a leaky radiator hose, you can put rack duct tape around and around, around the split, and that can do you a temporary repair where it can be replaced properly. But mm. uh, duct tape is really good. Insulation tape is smaller. It's narrow. It's better if you're going to have a broken wire. You want to tape it up twist it together and put some electrical tape around it. But, yeah, I'd say both tapes have got their purpose and their uses. So when you say insulation tape, in my mind I was thinking of this like thick, spongy tape that provides insulation, but you're talking about what I know as electrical tape. Electrical tape, that's right. Okay. Electrical insulation tape would probably be the, the correct term for okay. it, yes. And the duct tape is the silver, the you're silver talking about the, not the yeah, cloth the tape, but the silver wide. stuff. Yeah, it's about yeah. 50 mil wide and it's um, yeah, quite tough. It's very, very tough stuff, yeah. Yeah, yep. that silver plastic. does leave yeah. a sticky mess sometimes if you leave it, it on can, for too long, but, but it's, gets it's, you out of yeah. trouble. Yeah, bomb, isn't it? Cable ties are given. Just have a – I always carry yeah, a big handful of cable ties mm. for yep. all sorts of reasons. Um so we've got fuses, fuses and electrical wire and electrical terminals. Mm-hmm. 
yep. fuses, uh, a lot of caravan tech fuses, either glass fuses or blade fuses. Um, these days they're pretty common because a lot of caravans got a lot of electrical stuff on board. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them have glass fuses, which is what you would call your inline fuse. And, uh, yeah, electrical terminals, um, if a, a terminal comes off a wire, it's usually a, a terminal usually crushed onto a wire. Um, they're not always soldered. They're a crushing uh, yeah. type of like thing. Like a crimp, so, crimped on. Like mm. a crimp, that's right. Mm-hmm. So if you can't, if the terminals come off the wire, you want to put it back on and you can't reuse that terminal because yeah. it's already crimped. So you need another one to replace it. So I usually have a, a couple of blade ones and a couple of plugs, just a couple of different ones mm-hmm. uh, that once again don't take up much room and they can just get you out of trouble. Um, now I was going to ask you to Kevin about the um, – fuses will caravans generally have a whole range of different fuses like 5 10 15 or, or whatever and in that case would you take a couple of each size it would be a good idea to it depends on the caravan and the sort of electronics that I have been put in it if you look at some of the older caravans you might see the odd um uh, glass fuse or inline fuse which is generally you know 10 15 amp uh, with a modern caravan, they have a lot of electronic gears in it, um, battery chargers, uh, inverters, or solar panels. All of these things have different size fuses. So it'd really be a matter of just having a bit of a look at your fuse boxes or where fuses are, seeing what sizes there are, um, and just taking a spare one of each. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't hurt. You can buy kits or packets of, of multiple sizes of fuses yeah. from the motor accessory places that have about six or eight different sizes. And I mean, they're, they're fairly inexpensive. They take up a little room. So I would take a multitude of sizes um, and try and find out if you need glass fuses as well as the blade fuses just to make sure. Is there any particular sort of accessory or line that in your experience trips more commonly than others? As in um, fail, you mean? A yeah, fuse like your f- fuse fail, sorry. Um. I haven't had anything. I suppose the, the main thing you need to consider perhaps your solar panels, they can be very, they can have a fairly big fuse. It's anything coming off your battery. If something, you know, we talked about earlier about a wire coming loose and um, that could be a live wire coming from the battery and that suddenly touches something straight away, you, you, you trip it. So I can't really give you a specific mm. item. It could be anything from the solar panel down to supplying power to your lights, to your fridge. Or, or your um, your TV, anything like that. So uh, there's nothing specific. Uh, that's why I'd recommend a range of sizes just to cover all avenues. Cool. So have a look through all your fuses. Don't I don't think it's enough just to buy that multi-pack that you talk about. That's probably going to get you across the line for the most part, but have a look around at the bigger fuses and, and, and other things as well have, yeah. and grab a, grab a handful of those. Because yeah. like you said, Kev, they're, especially the blade fuses, they're, they're lightweight. They don't take up space so mm-hmm. and they're not expensive. So, yeah, grab a handful. Yeah. Um, you've got wheel bearings down here now. The everyone hopes they don't have to change a wheel bearing while they're on the road. I've never had to do it. I do carry wheel bearings for my car, but does that go hand in hand with making sure obviously you've got the right tools to be able to do the job as well? Absolutely. Um, changing wheel bearings can be a bit of a a, a headache, um, depending what part. You don't just unbolt, take one off, put one back on again. It's part of the bearings are actually pressed into the hub. So you've got to have the tools and the know-how, and I can appreciate that a lot of people may not have that know-how to get a, a cone, which is the part that's in the hub, get it out of the, the thing because it may be cracked and heat affected. So even if you don't know how, having them as a spare part can be an advantage because if you go to a some of these little isolated uh, road houses and you say, look, I think I've done a wheel bearing, I say, okay, we'll get you some spare parts. It's going to take four days to get them in. You can say, well, hang on, I've got my parts here. They can probably do it, you know, within a day. So mm. even just having them there is is an advantage, even if you don't know how to place replace them. But I suppose that at some point it, it probably would be worthwhile in some cases doing perhaps a, a car maintenance course somewhere if you're going to go on extended tours and you want to be able to do these repairs. Mm. If a, a bearing has collapsed completely and you're out in the middle of nowhere, you can't tow the van. So the wheel will just damage the axle and it'll, I suppose it'll ultimately come right off. Mm. So you've got to leave it. So if you've got that knowledge and the the parts and the the tools, you can actually change wheel bearing very easily. But um, if you can't do that, then having them as a spare, as I said, someone else can probably do that for you to save you waiting for parts to be bust or flown in. Mm. So is there one specific tool that you need there? Like does it come down to just one tool to pull that, the bearing um, out of the um... – Well, to, to take the – I mean, the whole procedure means you've got to take out a, a 
your grease cap off the end of the hub, you take out a split pin holding your hub nut on, you take the hub nut off and you pull the hub off this axle. Uh, now, obviously, you also need to take the tyre of the wheel off uh, the hub beforehand. Now, once you get it off, you the, the actual bearings come out fairly easy, but the cones, that's the part in the hub, they actually have to be punched out. So you've got to sort of need the right sort of punch, turn it upside down on a block of wood or something and, and knock the, the cone out. Now, yeah. that's the sort of thing you do need to know how to do it. And then, of course, once you've got it out, you've got to put the new one back in again in the similar procedure. Mm. You also need to change the hub seal, which is usually damaged when you take the uh, inner bearing out. So that has to be put in too. So all these things are a little bit tricky. Mm. And, yes, if you've never done it before, you might think oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. And that's why it's it's worthwhile to perhaps, I mean, look on YouTube. There's lots of videos on how to change yeah. the wheel bearing. Mm. Just get some basic knowledge and have a go at it yourself. If there's no option, uh, and you've got to leave the van, well, then you've got to leave the van, but if you can have a go at it yourself and repair it yourself, then you can probably get yourself back on the road and maybe have it checked when you do get to a mechanic afterwards just to make sure you have put them in correctly. Would you take um, a spare, just one spare for your van and one for your car potentially, or would you take a couple? I would take one. I've got one set for the uh, van, and uh, I actually don't have a set for the car. The wheel bearings are very durable um, mm. parts of your car. Um, I've travelled many times. I've never taken a spare set of wheel bearings for the car okay. and I've never actually needed them. Okay. Um, it's good nice to, know. to have them. But I have seen uh, other people in caravans or trailers that have had wheel bearings that have collapsed and a lot of that gets down to how they've been serviced. If you've serviced your van correctly or you've had a mechanic service correctly, you shouldn't need to. But if someone's put it on a uh, backyard mechanic who thinks they know what they're doing and they tighten them up a little bit too tight, they get very, very hot, and that's when the, the heat surface actually starts to fail and they go blue and then the bearing will start to collapse. So properly serviced vans, you should never have any problem, but there's always that case that you just might be unlucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I said, a, a caravan is probably more likely to see it happen than a car, but I suppose it can happen to either. Either. When you said you when you said you had a set for the van, did you mean a, like one set for the van? You meant one for both wheels? No, just one set. One set. A, a set I think it's okay. very unlikely that two wheels would have two sets of bearings collapse. Uh, it would be, yeah. a, 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 as I said, I've never had it happen to me, but I have seen other people on the side of the road saying, yes, I've cooked the bearings, I've got to wait for parts to come in or whatever. Okay. So by set you mean a, a set of bearings, a set of for, bearings one wheel. for one wheel. For one wheel, that's yep. correct, yeah, and a hub seal Okay. and yep. some spare grease. All right. Yep. And it's got to be the right grease too, wheel bearing grease, like high high temperature type grease to pack High temperature it, grease, yeah. 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 If you don't have that, ordinary grease will do the job. It'll get you to where you're going. So as long yep. as there's lubricant in there and it helps keep the bearings cool and keeps them lubricated. Yep. Right. I feel like we're moving slowly through this mm. list here, but you've got U-bolts. U-bolts, yes. Um, <laughs> it depends on the types of suspension you have in your van. If you've got a leaf spring like mine, uh, uh, yes. The U-bolt is what bolts the spring to the axle, and look, it, it doesn't happen a lot. But I've sent, I've heard of, I haven't seen, I've heard of U-bolts coming loose, and the bolt nuts will come off, and one will bounce off uh, or break, and of course, then you're in a bit of trouble. The axle can then start to float around. So, uh, if I was going to do a, a really big trip, uh, I would take a spare of U-bolt or two. Um, in saying that, I actually don't carry the U-bolts. Um, I think it's very unlikely that they would break, but it's more that the fact that it has, when it's been serviced, for some reason the U-bolts have been released or moved or you've had something new put on and they just haven't been tensioned up correctly. So most important for leaf suspension. And do they need yep. to be like a rated U-bolt? You can't just go and get a, a, know, gen- a gen- generic, generic one from U-bolt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, U-bolts are pretty specific depending on their length and the size of their axles. Most axles are square, some are round. Um, some may have thick springs, some may have thinner springs. So there's a variety of sizes. But uh, if you wanted to, you can use them. It's it's a, it's on my list, but I've never really thought about using it. I, I have had them break on four wheel drives, but then they've been on very rough terrain. Mm-hmm. Um, the, my caravan has been made with very heavy axles, and they're quite large U bolts. And I keep make sure they are tight every now and then when I service the van. I just put a ring spanner on the nuts and just give them a bit of a reef up and just make sure they are nice and tight. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, it, and it does need to be a specific U-bolt. Like Lauren just said, you can't just go to Bunnings and get your 
your bolt no. that you're going to use to attach something to your roof rack, it's got yeah, to be a specific bolt, a specific mm. bolt for suspension. Specific. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, if you, as I said, you've got round axles and square axles and the U-bolts have to suit that axle and also the diameter and size and length. They all make a difference to it. Yeah. Okay. So obviously they're really only something you would consider as we've already reiterated a few times, leaf springs. And maybe if you're doing something pretty heavy duty, like if you're, yeah. you know, hours and hours of corrugations or really rough ground or you're you're doing a real rough trip, you'd probably pack them. Yes, yes, that would be good. And also independent suspension may be completely different. Um, mm. Without really looking at them, I can't really say what sort of bolts they are that hold it all together. They usually have a swinging arm, which is a different, different sort of thing. And I think in the end of the day, you've got to sort of think, well, okay, can I actually fix this thing? You know, is this likely to go wrong? Um do I really need these parts? You, you do have to sort of consider you've got to carry all this stuff as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's, if it, the van is properly serviced and looked after, you probably shouldn't need these things. So I try to serve my van myself and I do it regularly. So I, I avoid taking a lot too much stuff that I think, well, that's just not going to be used. Mm. It's an interesting balance, isn't it? Because you could pack all this stuff, carry extra weight, and then that's extra strain on the van that you're trying to service. So. And like, then, like the time you don't pack it, sure enough, is the time you need, you need it. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's when it'll go wrong. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you've got grease on your list. I know we talked about uh, grease with wheel bearings, um, yeah. replacements, and what what have you. What else would you be packing grease for? Uh, the only thing I would suggest would be perhaps putting on the tow ball of your car, or maybe your coupling. The okay. coupling has, uh, especially if it's an override coupling, it is a compressible coupling. Um. But if you grease that before you go away, you probably would need it. And even to grease that, you actually need a grease gun. Okay. So that's another thing that you may want to think but to take. But um, grease it beforehand, you shouldn't need to grease it again. But that would be the only other thing I can think of using grease for. But if you were taking, you know, a little bit of grease as part of your wheel bearings, you wouldn't need a grease gun, would you? You can just sort of use your finger, that, no. your finger in a tub and just yep. sort of scoop it out. That's it. Yep, that's right. Good WD forty. It's a bit of a given. I think duct tape, cable WD-40, ties, and WD forty right, yeah. just gets you out of all sorts of yeah. trouble. It's loosening your bolts, MacGyver kit. Yeah, moisture and yeah, basic in stuff. That. And, it's yeah. excellent stuff. So yeah, yeah. Uh, split pins. Um, like all it, I'm just, thinking of is paper craft from primary school. <laughs> so I Not don't know. Those split pins. I don't know what a split pin is. <laughs> well, it's it's a bit that goes like you when you put a a, a bolt through, then you put a pin through it so it doesn't come back. Oh, like a giant bobby pin. We'll go a bob, sure, bobby you might pin. Call Let's go with bobby Lauren, pin. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I sweet. guess you could I guess you could use a bobby pin if you were stuck and you go, it's yeah, okay, yeah. I've got a bobby pin in my hair. Yeah. Um yeah. but a range of sizes and things I suppose to fit Just a, what, a range, what, yes. Yeah. Assuming once again in the, in your motor accessory places, you can actually buy packets of different sizes. Yep. Uh, once again, fairly inexpensive, and you you find a lot of nuts and bolts. As you say, you do up a nut. There's usually a, a hole for a split pin to go through. Mm-hmm. On things like some of your your jockey wheels, um, there's a split pin that holds the nut in place. There's the, the split pin that holds your wheel axle hub on place. There's split pins that hold um, various fittings underneath that uh, might come loose. Uh, it's just a general thing to carry. Uh, it's as you said, you can use a bobby pin, use a piece of wire if you wanted to in place of it, but it's just nicer to have the correct pin that you can put in and then you don't have to think about, oh, what do I have to do this when I get home? I've got to take that bobby pin out and put a proper split pin in. You can do it while you're out on the road. Mm. I think you raise a good point there that you could carry split pins, but then if you've got tie wire, like the tie wire does many different things, right? So if you don't have split pins, there's when you're sort of bush yeah. mechanic yeah. things, yeah, yeah, totally. there's other things you can use for that. Even a duck uh, cable tie you could put through to because it just stops it from coming off coming the end of the emergency. Coming off the yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, screws, bolts, etc. This, I've, this is one of those things. It's a bit of an endless supply of what size and how many do I yeah. take of screws and yeah. bolts and yeah. all that sort yeah. of stuff. Um, do you have a kind of guideline on what you should maybe be carrying um, those for? Well, I don't go for anything really big. Um, like suspension bolts are a little bit specialised. They're high tensile. They're very big and very hard to replace. Should you have to? But just nuts and bolts, probably from little ones from, say, I don't know, three millimetre up to about six or eight millimetre nuts and bolts of a variety of lengths. Um, screws can be PK screws, wood screws, Phillips head screws, um, some washers to suit, nuts to suit the, the bolts. It's just a variety of things that if you something has broken and it needs a nut and bolt put in, you can usually have a find something that will do the job. I had uh, my, well, it's just a simple thing, my um, windscreen washer 
bottle come completely loose on the car that I had and it was rattling around inside the, the engine bay. Now, I didn't have the correct bolts, but I was able to put two bolts in from my kit mm-hmm. and that did me for the rest of the trip. So it was just a simple little thing that happened. Um, they just rattled out on the rough roads and yes, yeah. I hear this rattling underneath and I had a look. I thought, oh, great. I could take it right off if I needed to, but I thought I've got the bolt, so I bolted it back in place. Yeah. And, so, not, uh, away. so not necessarily a direct replacement of existing bolts, just an assortment of things to get you out of to trouble. get you out of trouble. I reckon there's, right, yeah. there's possibly one exception to that, and that might be wheel nuts. It's taking I, uh, I always carry spare wheel nuts. I do. I carry spare wheel nuts, and the wheel nuts on my caravan are exactly the same as what's on my car. They're okay. both Land Rover wheel nuts, and my spare wheel carrier has three of them. So I've got three spare wheel nuts if I need to. I okay. use those as my spare ones. I can take one or all three off and tie the spare wheel on somehow if I really need them, if I lose that many. But, um, yeah, if you've got different wheel nuts for your caravan and different for your car, make sure you've got some for your caravan as well as your car. Okay. So we've got here um, talking about wheels, your puncture repair kit and your second spare wheel. So mm-hmm. from a puncture repair kit, I've only ever really just used a can of Zoosh in a, in a pinch. I don't even know what Zoosh is, but you're, talk- you, you're talking that about Zoosh. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little aerosol can with a hose in it and it's got like a, a type of aqua deary type stuff in an aerosol and you put it onto your tyre and then it just like and you turn it and tire. it just it, it empties a whole can like of Zoosh foam. into your tyre uh-huh. and then as you drive it coats all the inside and it will fix, you know, pretty much any sort of I've, slow leaks. I've heard of it for bike tyres but not for car tyres, but mm. I, I, I think – I guess that's a solution. I'm not sure, but you, I assume you're also talking about like tie plug kits. I was talking about plugs, yes. Yeah. Yes, you probably you- could use that stuff. Uh, I'm not familiar. I know what you're talking about, Lauren. Uh, mm. I've never used it, but I'm not familiar about the I think it's only really valuable for like slow, small leaks. It's nothing serious. Yeah, yeah. No, I think if you've got a big hole, you've got to put a plug in it of some sort. And mm. um, and I take plugs. Uh, in fact, on my own data trip, I had a, a flat tire one morning and I had to um, put a plug in it. Uh, later on, put the spare on for the rest of the day, and then when I had time, I took it off and found the hole and uh, repaired it properly. Mm-hmm. But the plug is more of a, a not so much of a, a, sh- a long term fix, but it certainly will allow you to drive the car for quite a while. In fact, I had a t- tire guy, I think I was up in the Kimberley one time, he said he's seen them plugs in for, for almost over a year, and the car's yeah, right. still being driven on the plug. They're very durable, okay, but right. they're not a total fix, they're not a complete fix. So, yeah. it, it'll be advisable when you get somewhere to take it to a tire place and they can repair the tire properly with a proper internal plug. It's good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, the, so, and when you say, sorry, Benji, I was no, just, right. I when just, you say second spare wheel, you mean like yeah. a spare and then a second, so two spare wheels. Yeah. That's correct, yes. Okay. So yes, is that two yes, for your yeah. car and two for your caravan? Yes, I do. I carry so I four wheels. Four wheels. <laughs> I carry so a lot of wheels. That's, that's a, a lot of wheels. A lot of weight, right? I'm a, yeah, I've, it's I've, a lot of weight, but um, – I have been unfortunate where I've shredded a tire, basically destroyed the wheel completely. Uh, and so if I put my spare on, I no longer have a spare. So if I get another flat, I've got nothing to fall back on. Mm. So once again, depending where you're going, a short trip away, no, I wouldn't bother. But uh, a big trip like we did recently at the Nevada track, both the car and caravan had two spare wheels with each. Mm. And it's something I would highly recommend. So we've we've discussed this before a bit and I'm big on because the spare was 50-odd kilos, right? And I... I sort of settled eventually for the idea that I'm just going to invest in really good tyres and carry one spare. And touch wood, I haven't had an issue so far and I only carry one spare. But mm. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer there. Um, there is I'm, no. I'm, I'm one for just taking one, but Kev's one for taking four. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. anyway, um, a length of chain. Chain can be very shackles. handy. I'm just adding shackles in here as yeah. well. Chains and oh, yes. turnbuckles. Turnbuckles, shackles. Rated. Now, this, this is something that my my dad taught me. He drove trucks, interstate trucks in the 40s and 50s. And there were no mobile phones, you know, very little happened. If you broke something serious, and I'm talking about like a suspension arm or a, a spring or something like that, um, that means the axle's going to float around. Uh, and he couldn't drive the truck. He had to get the truck to help. So he would chain the axle to the chassis. Um, and I have seen this happen with a four-wheel drive. A guy actually, he actually used cable. Um, his back axle, I think the, uh, I think the center bolt, the spring broke. And he actually wrapped a steel cable around, around the spring and the axle and then tied it up to the chassis and put a turnbuckle on it 
which is something you buy from the hardware, and pulled it tight. And that kept the XL in place. And he was able to continue to drive on very slowly. He was only doing about five, 10 kilometers an hour, but he was actually able to drive on to where he could get the thing repaired properly. But wow. chain is a very flexible um, component. You can tie a knot in a chain, put a shackle on it. it it's, it's something that you need to know how to do it. But I have seen, as I said, an axle, and we talked about U bolts before. U bolts have given way and gone, and the band has slumped down and sat on the wheel. Luckily, there have been no damage, but they've jacked the axle back up underneath the spring and wrapped chain around it in a figure eight type of pattern, pattern and then um, just driven on very slowly. So wow. a length of chain, I carry about a metre and a half of chain and some turnbuckles and various shackles. And I'm fortunate my chassis has got holes in it and fixing points. I've got a second uh, main rail on it, which I can chain up to the axle and turn it, pull it tight so that it's basically holding the axle in place until you can get to where you're going. But, look, this is something that you've got to be able to know what to do. It's not mm. a, a, a fix-it-all type of situation. But chain can be in handy for any sort of thing. If your your coupling breaks on the, your caravan, you can chain it to your back of your car. You know, if you're in an unfortunate situation, um, if, if something comes off, you can put a piece of chain around it that's very strong. And I'm not talking about chain that you'd hang your pot plants up at home. Mm. I'm talking about a welded length chain. doesn't have to be heavy. It doesn't have to carry two, three tonne. It's just got to be a length of about, oh, I know how thick you would call it, not what four you millimetre would... steel lengths and um, something that would just hold a bit of weight and that you could put a bit of tension on and it'll stay there. I just find it's a very useful sort of thing. So it's just a chain you would get from a hardware shop? You can buy them from the hardware shop, yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. You can usually buy There's usually different sizes available. That's to say, don't go too heavy. Mm-hmm. That's completely unnecessary. But uh, a chain that you can use um, for uh, – I can't give you specific reasons, but I've just always yep. thought that, well, if something like that happens, I could probably chain that together and wrap okay. a chain around and around it and put mm. a shackle or even, as I said, tie a knot and use your tie wire as well to hold the chain in place. You know, yeah. all these things can work together. So you can put a block of wood perhaps between your uh, chassis and the axle if you happen to break the spring. So the chassis sits on the axle but not the spring. So you chain that or what tie wire that in place. It's all these sort of things that you would use in extreme circumstances, not in mm. everyday things, but in extreme case if you're in the middle of nowhere and something goes wrong, then this can help you get, up, get the thing back on the road again. Okay. And that goes hand in hand with a turnbuckle then? A turnbuckle is a device that has an, a hook or an eye on each end, and as you turn the centre of it around and around, it'll tighten. The two ends get t- t- pulled in, so you can actually tighten the chain up. Okay. You'd have to go to the hardware and ask for a turnbuckle, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think um, some of like the angle fridge fixing kits, I think there's like a turnbuckle kit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't that's think actually angle. an excellent reference. That's yeah. exactly what they are. They're a turnbuckle. They're only a small one. You want to get something a little bit bigger than those. But, yeah. yes, that's, that's a turnbuckle. Okay. So you've got your snatch strap and your tow rope. Um, or yes. your ro- So that's obviously your recovery kit there. That's right. Yeah, snatch strap or tow rope of some sort. Um, if you're – well, we almost came to grief on the unit out of track where I thought I was going to get completely stuck and I had to undo the, the – um, the caravan and get the car out of situation and then tow the caravan out of situation after it, but fortunately got through. But a, a tow rope or snatch strap is always a very handy thing to have. Um, I've also got their ropes and ratchet straps uh, for tying things down. Um, simple thing like if your spare wheel carrier breaks loose, you can actually tie the wheel to the, the bumper bar with ratchet straps. Yeah. Um, various ropes of sort, sizes, tying things down your roof rack or onto the, the – you know, uh, underside of the, the caravan, tie your water tank back up again. Now, there's lots of things that you can think of, but if you don't have them, you don't can't use them. But if you've got them there and they don't take a lot of room, yeah. Uh, I usually carry a couple of ratchet straps and a couple of lengths of not heavy rope, just heavy cord, I suppose you'd call it. Yeah. Uh, just in case I've got to tie something down. Okay. And you mentioned yeah, like you- that's the braided rope. I think yes. is that what they yes. call it? The it's got the core and the braided sheath around it. That rope, I think, tends to be a lot lighter and more versatile than like your plied ropes, like your your blue and sizely blue, so, yeah. blue and yellow plasticky stuff. So the the snatch strap and it can do the job so yeah. long as it's sort of dry enough and not too thin. You don't want to have string, mm. but as I said, just I, I would call it a heavy cord. Yeah. Okay. But if you're using something to tow or snatch, it's got to be a properly rated rope. You can't just use a 
yeah, like Telstra, proper snatch, Telstra, snatch, cords snatch strap, pull a proper. trailer, yeah. And yeah. same with U bolts. If you're using U bolts in um, rescue or tow scenarios, they've um, and quote me if I'm wrong, but they've got to actually be rated quite often. They've got a yellow. Um, How about shackles? Sh- D uh, shackles. You, uh, sorry, you've got U bolts here. Use bolts, D shackles. Is that kind of the same thing? I think U bolts the suit. Yeah. Yeah, but did you yeah. mean D shackles? D shackle. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Mean, are you asking Kev or me? Yeah. D shackle. D shackles. Yeah. Yeah, yep. shackles. What you're talking about? Yes. If you're chaining anything up or you're turning, then yes, you, it's a good idea to have rated um, shackles. Now, in a urgent situation, I've, I've got some that are not rated, but they're quite strong, and I know that they'll do the job. But uh, it's only a temporary fix. It's not something that I would sort of then tow the van for the rest of the trip with them. Um, mm. It's you can get shackles from the hardware store of like four mil, six mil, eight mil diameter pins on them. If you get a couple of those each, you can get yourself out of trouble with a lot of things. But if you're going to use it on a safety chain, then yes, it's got to be a rated shackle. And they'll have a w, uh, WLL rating stamped on it, the, the rated ones that you use. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's correct, yeah. Um, toolkit is a bit of an open-ended thing. Well, I suppose you'd want to you, be – I'm imagining you'd take like, you know, your basic Phillips and a flathead or whatever. Range of spanners or Pliers, a socket set, maybe, maybe a socket wrench, adjustable wrench. We should ask Kev. What, yeah, Kev. <laughs> you, you can actually buy ready-made tool kits in their own carry case. Okay. Um, that's what I would suggest you use as a minimum. There's different sizes, different um, types of tools in them, different um, uh, prices, of course. Uh, my toolkit I've I've put together over a number of years. As I said, my father drove trucks. He was a mechanic, so he would tell me, "You need these, Kev. You need those, Kev. And take sure some of those, Kev." And that's what I would do. So I've got a fairly comprehensive toolkit. But if you're not wanting to do that, um, as I say, you can buy them ready-made in a case. So I've got a couple of different screwdrivers, like I said, slotted and Phillips head, and some pliers, a couple of adjustable spanners, and a range of open-end spanners and ring spanners, and a hammer. You should be fine. You should be able to get yourself out of most trouble. And on those open end ring spanners, you should check uh, whether you need metric or imperial. Uh, is, a good is, idea. It, is it safe to say metrics, my, what most caravans would have? Most, um, that's a good question. Actually, a really good question because if you buy nuts and bolts from a hardware store, I could just about guarantee that they would be imperial unless you specifically bought metric. Mm. So, um, I can't really give you a straight answer mm. on that. If you could, I'd carry a, bit of, a few of both. Yep. But this is where your adjustable spanner comes in. If you don't have a spanner to fit, hopefully you can put your adjustable spanner in there and mm. uh, do the job. But hard, hard question to answer that one, whether or not it's metric or imperial. Yeah, okay. I suppose if you know you're packing your screws and your bolts as spares, m- m- having your open-ended ring spanners or whatever to match so, your spares at the very least is going to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gonna mm-hmm. see you right now. I know this one always um, <laughs> causes a bit of a stir, especially for Benjamin here because he likes to pack minimum. But um, your battery drill and drill bits and a battery angle grinder and a battery charger. Now you've the battery charger here. I'm assuming is do you have an inverter in your van? Um, I do. Yes. 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 I do have an inverter. Um, I I put that in the list because. I'm thinking that at some time you'll use your battery drill and you'll have hopefully a spare battery for it as well. Mm. Um, and when you get to a powered site, that's when you would plug it in and recharge. Yeah, right. Okay. Not necessarily recharge through an inverter. Yeah. So I can't see you doing lots and lots of drilling. You might drill a hole here or there to to fix something or drill out a rivet, put a screw in, whatever. Yeah. But it's not something where you're going to build something. So you shouldn't use your battery very much. Um, yeah. I, I would take it as a as a precaution. It's very handy to have. Um, but, yes, I would then rely thinking, well, when I get to a powered site next, that's when I'll plug it in and recharge it. I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine using an inverter for it myself. Okay. Yeah, we often, I think, when we go away, um, would take an impact driver, maybe two batteries, just to be on the safe side. Okay. An angle grinder yeah. I've never – Never thought of taking an angle grinder, but I guess in a bush mechanic scenario, Caravan, if you're having when you to, got your van, yeah, it it's, can, it's it can be pretty handy. Very handy tool to have, and in fact, I don't actually have one at the moment. Um, I was going to buy one before the Unidata track, but unfortunately, I things got out of hand, and I'd never got around to getting one. Um, I have seen them being used just for cutting off broken bolts that you can't get out. Really. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just think, in fact, a, a funny thing, my some years ago, I was going across the Simpson Desert and one of the other vehicles was towing a camper trailer and of course a stone bounced off the camper trailer and broke his back window. Uh, and he had mm. a he had a dual cab ute with a canopy and he went to the local rubbish tip and found a piece of plywood uh, that was the right thickness uh, and he actually cut the shape out with the angle grinder right. and fitted in it in the back window. For sure. And he said he wouldn't have been able to do it without the angle grinder. It, it was yeah. quite an unusual thing. Yeah, that's and in fact, cool. a couple of years later, he's still got a piece of plywood still in the, in the window. It did so well. <laughs> is, is so he, that's um, just one scenario. Has he packed a jigsaw now? might need an angle grinder for, and that was very useful. Yeah, but definitely. He, uh, he said he might want to cut something off that's jammed that he can't get off. It, it was just one of those things that if you're in really a remote country, it's just a handy thing to have. But whether you yeah. choose to take one or not, it's up to you. Well, I guess okay. it is quite multi-purpose. If you have a couple of different discs, you should would see you through a couple of different situations. I'd say if you get an angle grinder that uses the same batteries as the drill, I generally suppose, you would. You, if that you're would be someone, a handy thing to have. Yeah, yeah. If you're someone who has cordless tools, you would buy. Have you would have one. all the same brand. Yeah, yeah. A uh, spare water connection. Uh, do you mean when you're connecting to a water supply to caravan park? That's right. Um, the connection I'm talking about, what goes on your caravan. Mm. I was actually going to bring one in today, and I, I completely forgot about it. This is the fitting that you screw into your water inlet on your caravan, not the one that goes onto your the tap. And the reason I say to carry a spare is because it's a unique thread. I think it's an American imperial thread. Oh. All the water fittings and tap fittings we sell here are a metric thread. Right. And you can buy a snap-on fitting and try and screw it in. It'll go in two turns and jam. Oh. And then you put the water on it, it'll blow it back off again. It's a fairly unique fitting. Um, it's just because they're not that easy to buy. You can't buy them from a hardware store. Yeah. So if you've got one for your van, go to a caravan and safety place and buy a second one. It's yeah. just handy in case you lose it, then you can plug your, your water in. But I'm also talking about water connections for the tap as well. Um, yeah. They sometimes break, you lose them, whatever. It would be a bit annoying if you can't attach it to a, a tap in a caravan park. Definitely. So fittings that, that, that go onto the tap and also the fittings that go on your hose. I carry a couple of spare of each. And when you say the tap, not not just the one that pushes on, but also the adapters that yeah, the screw male onto and the tap. Is. Because, right. yeah. yeah, because you don't know what that caravan park's tap is going to be. Yeah, we've got and ones they, that are. Um, sorry, Kev, I started talking over you there, okay. but you like it's like the wider one, and then the thinner one screwed onto the wider mm. one, so you can actually unscrew it if the tap size is different. Mm. And it's like, does that make sense? Yeah, I know so what you mean. Yeah. it's a yeah. single yeah. Um, male hose fitting, but it it. We'll do two sizes yep. of tap. Yeah. I think one's uh, 25 mil and the other is 19 mil. Yeah. That, that, or, or inch and three quarter with the old imperial size. But, yes, I know what you mean. There's ones that come with both both fittings and you can adapt to each one to what you need. Yeah. What's a, um, a spare water tank barbed tail? What is that? That depends on your situation. Now, uh, once again, I can refer to uh, in an editor track. My brother-in-law um, – broke the water barbed tail. This is where the hose goes into the tank that goes to your pump uh, and a okay. rock hit it and broke it off and caused all of his water drained out of his tank. Now, he didn't have a spare, so he couldn't use a tank again for the rest of the trip. He had to go preferred back to jerry cans. Uh, now, that means you're also going to lose a lot of water. So some tanks, you can actually screw the barbed tail in. It's actually a threaded part. Okay. And you can screw it in. Uh, if you break it off, you can just unscrew it, screw the new one back in again, and then fill the tank up again. Okay. Some tanks, however, are molded. They are part yeah. of the tank. And if right. they break off, the tank's had it. Okay. You can't put it in back on again. But I'm talking about the threaded ones. It's probably a good idea. It depends on how well you've got your tanks protected. Here's actually, unfortunately, wasn't all that well protected. Mm. And a rock hit it and snapped off very early on, only on the dirt road for a short while. And I noticed there was water coming out of the back of his camper. And when we stopped, we had a look. Yep, there it was, snapped off. Right. Um, Potentially something if you're going to buy a van or if you buy an old one and you're upgrading to consider that maybe getting a screw in. A screw if in that's tank. What the tank if, that's if on it's, the van, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't carry them for my van because my all the, the barbed tails on mine are very well protected. It would be okay. an absolute fluke if they mine broke off. Okay. But uh, some vans are put in sideways and the barbed tail sticks out the side. It's okay for a road van, but if you go on a dirt road, it doesn't take much of a rock to knock it off. Okay. Is that the sort of thing you'd use your pool noodle or something to a, a, a I think it was after a previous episode we spoke to you, Kev, someone recommended pool noodles over 
tank fittings and that sort of thing on the outside of your caravan to protect it while it's on the road. That seems like a genius pool idea. Pool yeah, you know like versatile. pool noodles? They're like foam, long, skinny yeah. foam things for the pool when they've got a, 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 a hollow oh, core. Hollow yeah. yeah. No, cut them in different lengths. Yeah, if I guess if you cut them in different lengths and you slice them really thinly down the side, then they sort of like insulation – yeah. Hose insulation or something. That would be really – that's I mean, a genius just, idea. I, I guess rocks and things are just going to bounce off the pool noodle instead. They yeah. do seem super versatile, so maybe you should add a pool noodle to your pool, spare pool kit. Noodle, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, mean, we carry it for the kids anyway, but um, but they're, you know, for roof racks, stop rattles, all sorts of things for the yeah. pool noodle. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So last but not least here, Kev, you've got a blue plastic tarp. Um, yeah. What do you do with that? Does it have to be blue? No. <laughs> No, sorry. <laughs> Most people write them to blue. Um, it doesn't have to be blue. You can be green or silver. Sorry, I use mine stupid. as a um, a ground sheet, basically, if I have to get under the van. But um, there's also sort of things, as I mentioned earlier, if you break a window, you can cut a big piece out and tape it to the side of your van and try mm. and stop the weather from coming in with your with your duct tape. Um, but I use it for that. It can be used for also use it for shade. You know, you can use it for um, in an emergency. You can put shade out the side of your car if you don't have an awning. Yeah. Tie it onto the roof rack. There's, there's all sorts of things. Once again, it's not a heavy thing to carry. You can put it over something to stop dust and dirt from getting on it. It's just a, one of those things that on a long trip I carry a small tarp. It's not deep. It's only about, no, it's a six by four, I think. Uh, and that does the job very nicely. I don't have to carry anything else, but uh, I use it mostly as a ground sheet just in case you've got to lay under the van and lay dirt, yeah. And, dust and, mud. Yeah. and I guess if yep. you're laying out, you know, if you've got bits and bob, um, you know, bolts parts and tools and, and parts and stuff, having them sit on the tarp instead of just being in the dirt to sort of get scuffled also, on yeah, or get lost very, and stuff that's like that. That's a good idea too. Yeah. 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 Wheel bearing. You don't want to be doing a wheel bearing in the dust on the side nah. of the road because you, oh, no, you want to keep no. that Not dirt out all. of it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, that's it for your camping list, Kip. Do you have any any uh, final thoughts? Uh, last minute entries to the list. Um, well, no. The only other things I can sort of suggest is, like I said, not everyone can do repairs. Um, you're just not able to. You've never had to. You, you, if you can do a bit of a, a car maintenance course, a lot of the car maintenance courses covers basic repairs, which mm. you can adapt to your caravan. But if you can't fix it, you've just got to be prepared to abandon the caravan if it can't be towed and um, travel on to where you can get some help or put up with it. I mean, if you blow your fuses and none of the electrics work, well, at least you can keep towing it. You may not be able to find the source, but at least you can keep towing it. Mm. Um, that some things you just can't fix. Uh, other things you may not know how to fix, but it's just a thing that everyone's different. Um, just try and do what you can. If you can't do it, don't panic. Just adapt to whatever you need to do. Do you think it's fair to say that, Everyone say so that we did out a track. Everyone's there for the same reason and carrying spares. And if um, if you Kev came across someone who was broken down on the side of the road and couldn't do it themselves, you'd be happy to stop and and help them out of a, a pickle in the hope that they do the same for you if, if their roles were reversed. Yeah, yeah. I've stopped behind other bands that have obviously got a problem and usually been waved on. They're okay, um, but it doesn't hurt to stop. And even just someone stopping and saying, "Look, can I help you?" And you might say, well, look, no, you can't. I've broken this thing. I've got to get it towed. At least they're, they're, it's, it's, it's more human contact, if you know what I mean. Yeah, mm. like they're uh, not alone nice in it. It's to know that someone yeah. is caring and checking yep. or even offered to give you a ride. Now, I, I had a lot of things happen on this at a track where you came across a guy not far south of William Creek. He waved us down. He seemed to be okay, but there was oil and steam coming out of the engine. He actually cooked his engine. Now, the fact right. that we stopped and helped him, he was very appreciative. Otherwise, he would have a, about a five, six kilometer walk going into um, into William Creek to get help. Yeah. So it's just that sort of thing. You may not be able to help them get on the road, but perhaps you can pass a message on or give them someone a ride, that sort of thing. It just makes a lot of difference to helping someone on the road. So, yes, mm. it's, it's a very important thing, I think. Awesome. Cool. Well, hopefully um, Kev's spare parts list has given everybody listening a bit of a rundown and an idea at least of something to build on or to sort of scratch off that and add something else and, and whatever, a bit of a skeleton list there. Sure, there'll be heaps um, of ideas, other people's yeah, ideas. Yeah, other people's ideas too, coming so in. Of, so we'd love to hear them. Share it. Oh, you, yeah. I, I, 
I love hearing from other people when they say, oh, I fell in this problem and I did this. I thought, oh, that was a good idea. This is where I heard about the chain and the, the excellent thing from my dad. He, yeah, he yeah. Uh, had mm. that problem with it. So, oh, this is a good idea. I'll take this today just in case. I've never had to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, other people's ideas can be very informative and helpful. And they yeah. might say, no, that won't work. I did this. This worked better. So, well, that's a great idea. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good thing. So Kev's not always online, but Benji and I are, and we'll pretty much um, be able to pass anything on to Kev and get him to answer questions and things yep. like that as well if anyone's got any. Cool. Thanks for joining us, Kev. Thanks, Kev. See you next That's time. Right. You're welcome. Enjoyed it. Okay, bye. We'll see you next time. So that's it for another Caravanning with Kev episode. That was pretty good. There's a lot of things that I could think about for my car and stuff now that I haven't considered too. Yeah, so. I just think about the weight where I'm going to pack it. Of course you do. <laughs> Minimalist. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll talk to Kev about some other accessories and stuff in the future too. In Not future. spares, but accessories. So. Awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next week. See you later. Catch you later.